are you? Welcome. It is the Nisha Jackson Show. I'm Rusty Humphrey. She is Nisha Jackson, and uh, it's great to have you here. We sure appreciate you. First of all, Nisha, <clears throat> I really want to start off with, I'm a little worried with you, about you. I, I, <clears throat> in talking with you, I don't think you fill your day up with enough stuff. You know, I really don't. No. I, I, I'm, 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 I've become a, a little bit of a slacker these days. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Really, I have. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, to, to get to, we do our shows, normally we kind of have a schedule and we do a couple at a time and Nisha like this, well, I couldn't make it because this one flight got canceled. I got to drive here and do this and then, and I got 15 things and oh but yeah, I'll be there. Oh, I got physical therapy appointment. Then I'll be there. I, oh, I got to take a shower first. Then I'm going to come in. It's like, holy mackerel. I don't know how you do it. You know what? It doesn't seem that complicated to me, maybe because I've been doing it for so long. But you know what? I'm really not like I, I'm really not unlike everybody else. Everybody else is just kind of going right. I'm not the only crazy in the world going back to back with things to do and places to go. Right. That's true. The, the whole world is operating like this now. Well, I'm, I'm quite I'm quite convinced. Well, and one of the ways that um, probably keeps you healthy I know you care a lot about your body and you work on that stuff. I would think a good multivitamin, something that you take every day to kind of keep you going. Uh, is that one of the first things you do every day? Good lead in. I Good lead in. I, I, I get this question asked. I, I, I get this question a lot from my patients saying, should I be on a multivitamin? And I've been saying for many, many years, it's 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 really not important to take a multivitamin. Now, I know a lot of people take them. What are you talking about, Willis? I know. I know. It's It sounds a little contrary to what maybe what you've heard or what you've read. But multivitamins, I feel and I'm not going to I'm not going to say all of them are bad, but I would say that the majority of them are somewhat useless. Um, now, there are some that are multivitamins that have additional ingredients that will help a specific problem like concentration, memory, focus, brain power. But most multivitamins that come in a tablet form, a press tablet, which is the worst because it's too hard for your body to break that down. Press tablet. A, what do you mean by that? You know, like an actual a tablet. Form like, an, as like an aspirin kind of thing where it's. Yes. OK. Like, like, yeah. Like a tablet versus a capsule. OK. Or a, or a gel capsule. So a, a multivitamin that has many different things in it. So you look at the back. See, this is what's so confusing to Americans. When you look at the back of a, of a, of a, a multivitamin bottle or box and, and, you're, and you're looking at, you know, there's 25 things listed. You think, wow, this thing is amazing. It's 100 awesome. It's 100 or 120 percent of what I'm supposed to be getting. Well, the recommendations are basically just to keep you from getting ill, like getting disease. The recommendations are not to get you optimal or prevent disease. That's a whole different range. So many people are confused when they look at the ingredient list. They don't really understand how much of the vitamin, mineral, nutrient they need in order to get optimal levels and to prevent disease as they age. And that's so one that's of your big different. things. And that that that's is... Different. Right. So, I mean, because what I understand, you know, I went to your clinic and stuff. Uh, your thing is not about being the baseline, which is what a lot of doctors want. Hey, you're in the normal range. You want you to be at the optimal levels. And right. that's what makes the difference. That's kind of what your uh, form is, keys to success are, right? Right. Because here's the deal. I'll make it really simple. I'm not looking for people to be satisfactory or just okay or just in the low end of the normal range, I want people to be awesome, fantastic, superior, above normal, because that's where you have to be. You have to be in the upper end of the optimal range in order to prevent disease or to reverse symptoms that you're having. If you're having fatigue, you're having migraine headaches, you're having insomnia, you're on a bunch of medications that are leaching vitamins and minerals from your system. You need more than just average. You need more than just low end of normal. You need optimal. But people don't understand what it takes to get there or what do these vitamins even do? Because maybe you really just need to be taking more folic acid for your particular problems. And that's why, Rusty, I think it's so important that we just educate people on what do these different nutrients, vitamins, and minerals do? So I just picked some of my favorite ones today that we could talk All right. about. All right. And, and ones that I think are really important to use as you get older. 
In fact, the U.S. Preventative Task Force actually discourages people from taking multivitamins because there is no way that you can rely on one capsule or tablet to, to provide you everything that you need in all those vitamins. So, yes, it's a little, little bit of A, a little bit of E, a little B12, a little B5, but it's not enough to do anything. And so right. you're kind of wasting your time and money. It's, it's too much volume to put in one little tablet. And so therefore it's, it's kind of, kind of like spitting into the wind. Okay. So I, I thought it would be good for us just to talk a little bit about what can you do to, to stay healthy and, and maybe some of these problems I'm going to talk about today would resonate with people Absolutely. so they can say, Oh wow, I need more B12. Okay. Now so, before we get in there, cause I want to get this, this is going to be a great one for you to take notes on. And in a couple of weeks also we'll have a transcript of this so you can get the ebook yes. of this. This sounds like it's very important. Now, before we get going, you were saying this is for older people. What is your definition of older Okay, I, I definitely didn't I definitely did not say it's for older. It's for as people age. Okay, age. So and and really it's really for anyone because there are children that have gastrointestinal problems like irritable bowel and digestive issues. And we're gonna talk about some of that today. And, for example, my daughter is nineteen years old and is a mess right now, and she's at your clinic right now. Literally, as we're speaking, uh, I've been trying to get her out there, and and I'm really uh, praying that your team is going to be able to find out what's going on there. So yeah, it happens. I mean, 19 years old up till you know I'm 55, and people older. You're this is great. Yeah, you know, I I want to give a little story because I'm really passionate about people, especially younger people who are sick. And, and getting a little bit more than just sort of like standard diagnosis and here's some medication, I'll see you in six months. Because just this morning I had lunch, uh, I had breakfast at um, my, my brother's amazing cafe in, in Salem, Oregon. It's called Little Lois's Cafe, literally the best cafe in the world. It's, they have, the, everything's homemade, it's amazing. Anyway, I was having breakfast and chatting it up with somebody there and this young gal had been diagnosed at age 12 with Sjogren's syndrome, which is an autoimmune disorder. And, um, you know, and bless her heart, she shows up for work every day. She has a lot of body pain, a lot of skin problems. She was diagnosed with it at age 12 and given pain medication. Well, now she's in her 20s. She's not had any further treatment, any further workup. She has all sorts of other issues going on. And and I just thought to myself, wow, is this as good as it gets in medicine? Like, can we not can we not give her anything else to help to help her age better with less age related illnesses? So when I say age better, she's in her 20s, but she's on the wrong path. She's on the autoimmune path. She's going to get more. She's going to get sicker. And, and the doctors, you know, aren't helping that you're right. They give you a diagnosis. Mine is my daughter's got fibromyalgia. So at 19. OK, they're telling her, yeah, you may need a cane. And oh, here's a handicap sticker for your car. And she's giving up. And it's like, no, right. no, no. You got to go to the, you know, do something. We, we, you know, well, my mom was sick. Well, you know, you've got half my genes, too, baby. Come on. You got to do something. And right. they've given her permission to give up. Right. And you, I you bet know, you see that all the time. Rusty, there's so many things that people can do. I don't care what age you are, that you can take control of your own health. And physicians and practitioners out there diagnosing, they're doing the best that they know how to do. But but in some situations, it's not enough. People need more help to look at the whole body, the, the all the lifestyle factors and exactly what they're eating and exactly what's going on. And, and, and I just watching this individual talk to me this morning, I picked up on five things that I know are making her health worse, just watching her. Wow. And, and so I think, I think that's what it takes is it takes almost like a team of people and for you to be more autonomous with your health. So you're, you're in control and you're learning. And that's really what this show is all about. This show is about educating people so they can take, take control of their own health and become educated. And I, and I love that because I think it's really important. And, and I can, again, attest to Nisha's expertise. If you paid attention to the show a few weeks ago where she did some hormone replacement. Nisha, I'm now in a gym. Uh, I'm, I'm running uh, four or five miles a day. Woo! Um, you know, I mean, it's it is amazing on how quickly uh, this hormone stuff 
changed me. It literally was a couple of days, and I feel it getting better and better every day. Is that what it's like for everybody, or am I just lucky? No, you're not lucky. Well, you're lucky that you changed the course of your health because it will make a huge difference as even in the in the in the in the very few years to come. But uh, it's very, very common. I mean, ba- you know, it's really simple, Rusty. When you just fill the cup up, when you fill the, when you fill your cup up with all the things that you need, you get healthier. When you when you replace your vitamins, you replace the hormones. When you optimize the neural brain chemicals, when you when you clean up your gut everything gets better. Just exercising alone and improving the circulation to your extremities and to your brain, to your brain, everything gets better. So, so it's, it's really the whole package and I'm so glad you're doing it. Well, thank you. Let's talk about what it is. You've got some supplements and some uh, things that we need that will help. Uh, one of, let's start with vitamin D for a second. I did not know this. Vitamin D is a hormone. It's not a vitamin. It's a fat soluble vitamin. But it's uh, it's on my list. So you're making me jump ahead. You know how I am about my list. I like I, I'm I like sorry. to stay in line. Okay. I like to stay in order. I'll stop asking questions. You go ahead. <laughs> what is the plan you've got? I don't want to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, no. Let's talk about vitamin D because I could talk about vitamin D blindfolded and you know distracted. <laughs> vitamin D. If I I just told somebody this this last weekend that I was uh, having Thanksgiving dinner with. He had been diagnosed with low vitamin D. Um, you know, uh, getting sick often, uh, having some uh, lower body extremity weakness, um, and some other issues that were going on, and he was diagnosed with low vitamin D. So his his physician in Michigan told him to just start taking uh, some vitamin D. So he went to the store and bought Nature's Way vitamin D, a thousand international units. Well, when you're in a low level of vitamin D, a thousand international units of vitamin D is not going to get the job done. I'm a hundred percent sure about that. So he showed me his bottle. I'm like, that's not going to get the job done. You're, you're, you're again, spitting into the wind. It's not enough. And there was no retesting ordered. So he's not being retested. So he's just taking this vitamin every day and just just well, I'm fixing it because I'm taking vitamin D. He's doing what he thought he was supposed to be doing, but right. it's not fixing the problem. So vitamin D is really important because it it helps your mood. It helps prevent depression, especially in the winter months. It it helps prevent heart disease. Forty percent reduction in heart disease. They've studied vitamin D with the with the flu shot, and it wins out every time. Vitamin D is more powerful at keeping you from getting sick than the flu shot. And, and uh, vitamin D is also really important for brain function. It's important for gut balance. It's impor- important for prevention of dementia. So the list goes on and on and on. Uh, cancer prevention, breast cancer prevention, c- prostate cancer, colon cancer. So uh, vitamin D, if, if I had to pick one thing that I think people need to be on, and this is really hard for me to do because there's so much that's important, but vitamin D just... There's just been so much research on it, and 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 some recent studies have come out that is questioning the use of vitamin D. But again, I think people need to be tested. Am I too low? And I would say probably ninety percent of the population is too low. Would you so, suggest somebody who isn't feeling great this winter maybe go in for one of those vitamin D shots, or should you be tested first before you do it? What we do, all I can speak to you about, Rusty, is what we do in our office and what I've seen over the last 30 years be important for patients. Um, you know, uh, um, I say that, you know, and I'm, I'm really serious about that. When you've seen patients and you've treated as many patients, we, we had um, over 50,000 office visits last year in our company. So, wow. So, not that not last year this year so this wow. year year to date 50 over 50,000 uh, almost 60,000 office visits and and when you see that many patients health change over time and this is you know that I've been doing it a long time you really understand cause and effect you see when you help them fix a low level of something and their symptoms go away whether it could even be like something with vitamin D deficiency like neuralgia neuropathy in their legs so, um, or somebody that's taking B12 and all of a sudden they have no more depression and anxiety. So, so it, this stuff really works, but you, ha- the testing is important. So what we do in our office, if you are low in vitamin D and the optimal range is 60 to 80, 
So we want your blood level to be between 60 and 80. And if it's not, we're going to give you enough to get it there. And yep. that usually means we'll give you a shot first. Um, if it's critically low, like we have some people come in and their level's 10 or Yeah, six. mine was like two or something. I mean, it was better. I mean, mine was real low. So Yes. I think yours was 17. It's That's really what we would consider critically low. And um, so, so we will give a shot first, maybe another one in a couple of weeks. And then we put patients on like 5,000 international units a day. That's really the minimum that we use to get the level up. Yeah. So your friend was taking 1,000. You're suggesting more like 5,000. Big yes. difference. If your level is low, you're going to need 5,000 international units to get it optimal. Very rarely do we see a level that's too high. We test almost every patient's vitamin D levels. You know, and, and so we have a lot of data with all those patients we're seeing. And, and um, so vitamin D when it's low people do not feel well but they can't put a, they can't put their finger on it they, they're like I just I just don't feel well I feel I feel low emotionally I, I'm tired in the morning I'm I'm my my I have like muscle weakness um, women at risk for osteoporosis or anyone at risk for osteoporosis especially if you've been taking steroids uh, or prednisone you really have to be on vitamin D because vitamin D facilitates calcium getting into the bone. So again, you're spitting into the wind. If you're just taking calcium, you need vitamin D in order for the calcium to work. Why not take 10,000? Why not go crazy and, and do more vitamin D than, than less? Yeah. So when it, in a shot, we'll give 40 or 50,000 international units in a shot. And the advantage of the shot is it goes into the muscle your levels come up immediately. You don't have to wait for the gut to absorb it. And so a shot can be really helpful initially. And I, and I, and I like to do those when people are low because I, I want to get this train moving in the right direction. So, um, But it is a fat-soluble vitamin, so you don't want to get too much because if you get too much vitamin D, which, again, we hardly ever see, but if you get too much vitamin D, it starts acting more like a steroid. And, and then it has some steroidal properties, which we're not interested in having people get. That, would, so, I, that wouldn't pump me up? No, we, okay. we, we don't want you to go to the steroid, to the steroid room. We, we, want you to, we want you to stay in the optimal range. Okay, more is not necessarily better. We just want you in the optimal range. So that's why we test at least once a year. If somebody's being treated, we'll do it more often, maybe every three months until we get it right. Okay. And then we just put them on a maintenance dose. It's better to be taking vitamin D with food especially food that has fat in it. So vitamin D is fat soluble, so it is absorbed better with food that has fat in it. So if you're going to take vitamin D, ice cream and pizza every day, and then eat your, take your vitamin D. No. You know, that's the old Rusty. <laughs> we're, we're, we're dealing with the new Rusty. <laughs> okay. No. Uh, oh, one more quick question. And then we got to get to the other ones because we have a lot of other supplements to run a short time, but very quickly. So your friend at Thanksgiving, who you helped out with this, when you were done, did you say, oh, by the way, happy Thanksgiving and $200, please? <laughs> no, Okay. but, it, but it will help him yeah. if his levels become normal, he will feel better. He will not get as sick as often during the winter months. He will feel a lot better. So of course I changed his dose, gave him some supplement and, and, and he'll, and he'll do great. That's very, uh, very nice. And no charge. You did cause he's a friend. Good for you. It's that's like, right. I had a friend who was a big time baseball player whose autograph was worth like a hundred dollars. And I used to tease him. So when you go to like a restaurant, do you just sign the receipt and go, eh, keep the change. <laughs> all right what other supplements okay so we know vitamin d is very important we know a multivitamin nah, we don't want to do what's the next step on your list of things we need to be looking at for supplements right so back to vitamin d for just a second okay. a lot of the things that i'm going to talk about these are just nutrients vitamins minerals that i think are kind of like the top most important ones and some of them you can get through your food. Vitamin D is one of them that's very difficult to get through food, to get enough. So a lot of people say, can't I just drink some more dairy or take, you know, drink some more milk or whatever, get my vitamin D? And I've said, I'd really rather you not because dairy is very poorly absorbed. It is a very uh, popular uh, food item, uh, food group that causes intestinal issues, especially food sensitivities. So I'd really rather people not being ODing on milk. I'd really rather not drink milk at all. And, and Sunny um, Delight, they say that's got a lot of vitamin D in it. Sunny D. 
Yeah, and a yeah, ton of sugar. Prob- yeah, probably. Not. So yeah, I would rather them just take a supplement of vitamin D because it's very difficult to get too much. But the second one on the list is fiber. We don't get enough fiber, especially as we age, Rusty. And fiber is so important for blood sugar balance. It's so important for controlling insulin, which is your fat storage hormone. It controls inflammation and cholesterol, and it helps you feel full. So again, if people were going back to what I think they should do, which is 50% of your diet should be vegetables. Think about it. Eight servings a day is equivalent to the amount of fiber that you, eight servings a day of vegetables is equivalent to what you need in fiber a day, unless you're using like fiber supplements or something. But I, do you like I read, those like fiber call or whatever that's an orange drink and you take that and do you like that yeah. kind of stuff? Yeah, I mean, there's sub, there's fiber supplements on the market, but you can get fiber through your diet. Eight to ten servings of vegetables a day will allow you to get, you know, the 20 to 30, 35 grams of fiber that you need in your day. And I'm telling you, you'll feel full and you're and, and you will have less of a weight issue as you age or you will lose weight if you just up your fiber. So people don't understand. It's not just that veggies are good for you. They give you fiber and they really, really, really are important for all sorts of health issues. And one of them being prevention of stroke as you age. So that that's really important. But you got it. You got to be eating and they help you poop. You need fiber to poop. Right. All right. Merry Christmas to everybody. That's a good one. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> you need fiber to poop, so eat your vegetables, you'll lose weight and poop better. Okay. Okay. The second one is, the third one is folate, or fourth one, really, because we talked about vitamin D. Vitamin B, a lot of people don't know what the B vitamins stand for, yeah. but B9, 9, is folate. And we need folate for, for, for many different reasons. You can get B9 and also in green leafy vegetables. You can get it in nuts. You can get it in beans and other foods. But you need to have folic acid. Like women have to take extra amounts of folic acid when they're pregnant because it helps prevent uh, nerve damage um, and birth defects. But also protects against certain types of cancer. It protects against stroke. And people need folate in their diet because they want to be able to age better and have less nerve damage as they age. So this is one of the ways that you can do it. It also is really important for colon cancer prevention. I don't know who's not, you know, uh, thinking about colon cancer, but colon cancer is one of those things you just don't want to get. You just don't want to get. Have you had your colonoscopy yet? No. Okay. You're going to get that soon, I'm sure. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. So folic acid or folate is really important. River. Uh, in diet. Okay. Um, so, uh, yes, so that's really important. Okay. And the next one is potassium. Okay. A lot of people don't have enough potassium in their diet. It's very important. Potassium is important and protective for your heart, your kidneys, your muscles, your nerves. Potassium is very important. And I can't even tell you, Rusty, how many people I test that actually have low potassium levels. So potassium, obviously, you can get from apricots, you can get it from bananas, you can get it from milk, yogurt. Um, but but what, what potassium, is, that one is is uh, when you have like uh, leg cramps and stuff, you're low in that one. Is that right? You you can be low in that. You can be low in magnesium, but potassium's really really important for your eyes. It's it protects your nerves, um, but. The next time you go into the medical office, it might be worth. Now, if you're just eating a lot of green leafy vegetables and colorful, some colorful fruit, you're probably getting enough potassium. But you may want to ask for a general chemistry panel or a um, um, just a general body screen because it will show your potassium level, which is an electrolyte, just to make sure you're at least in the middle of the normal range, not in the low end of the normal range. Okay. All right. So that's potassium. The other one that I love is selenium. Oh, I'm a big so fan you, of selenium. Oh, that's a you good ha- <laughs> What's selenium? You really only need four Brazil nuts to get enough selenium. Four. Okay, well, I can do that. And those, sucker, those suckers are huge, too, by the way. Those Brazil nuts are big. I don't really like them, but yeah. they have a lot of selenium in them. So if you're low in selenium, and you again, you can be tested for this, but selenium helps your thyroid work better. So people that are a little bit on the low end for thyroid on their on their thyroid output or their thyroid hormones, they can take selenium, and it can help boost their thyroid. It also helps prevent uh, against nerve damage and also from infection. So people that find themselves getting frequent infections or flu viruses, 
selenium can be really important for that. So is the only way to get the selenium is through the Brazil nuts? No, selenium can be taken in a, in a capsule form. So we use it in our office. If somebody is borderline low on their thyroid, we're, we're usually going to add either iodine or selenium or both of them to try to boost their thyroid output because the thyroid needs both of those to help make thyroid hormones. So I have, I'm, I'm on a thyroid thing. You put me on that, but I didn't get any selenium, I don't think. So do I need to go out and get some Brazil nuts? No, well, I wouldn't. It wouldn't hurt for you to take four. You don't have to get nutty with it. Okay. Four Brazil nuts a day. Um, so you don't want to get too much selenium. Again, this is one of those things I want to drive this point home right now. You don't want too much of anything. You want to be in the optimal range. So read up, look at dosages. Don't take things. Don't just walk into GNC and start buying stuff and go, okay, well that looks good. I like the color of the label. And I hope, I hope this works because someone said selenium's great, so I'm going to take 10 capsules a day because I really want my thyroid to work. Well, the problem is if you take more than 400 micrograms of selenium a day or 800 or 1200 because you're going crazy with it, your hair might start falling out. So we, I must be taking all kinds of selenium then. <laughs> Holy moly, there's my problem. We've nailed it. No. Your nails can get brittle and your hair can fall out if you get too much selenium. Huh. So you're probably not going to get too much if you have four Brazil nuts or if you take 400 micrograms a day because most people are actually low in selenium. And unfortunately, Rusty, the other problem is, is that our soil that we are growing our fruits and vegetables in today is very deficient in selenium in many areas. So I don't think we're getting enough selenium in our diet. Um, you know, many doctors say, oh, just eat a healthy diet and you should get plenty of the vitamins, minerals, and, and uh, nutrients that you need. And that's not necessarily true because I think a lot of our soil is deficient in those minerals and vitamins. So anyway, that's uh, selenium. And the last two I just wanna talk about, one is zinc. Uh, zinc helps inflammation and it also helps hormone balance. So zinc and, and zinc is also very preventative for uh, infections and the and, and 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 various types of sickness, especially flu sickness. So it, it protects against your eyesight, losing your eyesight with age. So if you don't have enough zinc in your diet, and a lot of people are not getting beef in their diet, um, uh, selenium. I mean, um, zinc you can get from beef, you can get it from crab. Uh, you can get it from oysters. I, I'm i not an oyster fan. No. no just I'm can't do it. I'm with you there. They're just too slimy. I just can't. I can't do it. So some people are very zinc deficient, especially if you're noticing changes in your eyesight. It, it's possible that you're low in zinc. And I would encourage you to maybe start with 25 milligrams of zinc. Men need a little bit more. And again, it's very helpful for um, hormone balance to, to get the conversion of hormones that you need as you age. And lastly, one of my most favorite vitamins is B12. We, we give it in a shot form a lot. Um, B vitamins, all the B vitamins are really important and I like them to be in balance. I don't like people taking just B12 because the, the body and the brain needs all the B vitamins in balance. So I don't like people just boosting B12, but, uh, B12, you can get in your diet eggs. If you're eating a fair number of eggs, you're probably getting a good amount of B12 already, but most people we test rusty are B12 deficient. And, so, and a lot of people uh, are allergic to eggs and don't know it, right? That's a big yes. thing. Yes, yes. There is, there is an inflammatory intestinal problem that there's an estimate, Rusty, that 30% of the adult population has something called atrophic gastritis, which is basically like an irritation in the lining of the, of the stomach. And it can cause, you know, problems with bowel movements. It causes like almost like irritable bowel symptoms. And it can, and it can be caused because people are not getting enough B12 in their diet. Because when you have this, it, 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 it causes you not to absorb the B12 as well, even if you are taking it. So um, you, you, you really need to start eating better, take good probiotics, get your gut in balance. So all these things that you're taking in your food and in your supplements, you're actually absorbing them. So I'd like to spend a whole show on how to get your gut balance. And that's going to be a good show for the yeah. new year. Okay. You know, when we're going in the new year, because it seems like January 1st, everyone's like, okay, I'm going to clean out the fridge, clean out the cupboards. I'm going to lose 20 pounds and I'm going to start eating better. And one of the things we want to do is we want to make sure they know how to get their gut clean, 
We're even going to talk about how to do a detox mm -hmm. diet so that, that you can get on track, start the first of the year. So all this good stuff you're taking is actually absorbing and working for you. And, you know, probably the best way to start that would be to get a hold of your office or go to NishaJackson.com and order one of those lab in a boxes and kind of find out where you're at to get started, yes. right? Yes. And, and, and what would be even more simple than that is just to start looking at your diet. And if your plate is not 50% full of vegetables, I think you should start switching it up. Um, and, and, and planning your meals, taking stuff with you, nuts and seeds and, and vegetables are really important with some really good lean proteins. That's the first thing you can do. Cause then you're starting to get more nutrients in your diet, vitamins and minerals that you need. Okay. And so more of a veggie pizza than an all meat one. Oh, we're not talking about pizza. <laughs> pizza is not on the topic. That does today. not count. Right. That's not good. That's not good. Pizza is a treat, not a staple. There you go. All right, Nisha, we are we are almost out of time. Anything you want to wrap this up with? No, I, I just I just want people to be more conscious about what they're doing and really understanding how much does it take to make a difference with health problems. So a multivitamin's probably not gonna get it done. Um, the other thing I'd like to say, Rusty, is People need to go to the website, to nishajackson.com. Send me a question. If you wanted me to do a show on a burning question that you have, I don't care what it is. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure that we cover it in as much of an unbiased fashion as possible and just give you the real data on some of the issues that are out there. So I'd love your uh, input and questions. You can go to nishajackson.com and uh, send me an email and let me know what your questions are, and I'll do a show on it. You know what I'm hearing a lot of, and we should do a show on, is... Hashimoto's disease. I'm hearing a lot of people talking about that, and that's a big deal, right? Yes, I'd love to talk about Hashimoto's, how the auto, how the immune system attacks the thyroid. I'd love to talk about it because it's becoming very prevalent, and it has a lot to do with our environment, right. our environmental uh, pollutants and toxins. All right, do yourself a favor. First of all, subscribe, 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 whether it's on YouTube or Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you find us, Roku, Apple TV, uh, Amazon Fire TV. We're on all of the all over the places. Uh, so please subscribe there. Also, if you, again, go to her website, nishajaxa.com, send an email. Uh, we'd love to answer the emails and find out um, the supplements or whatever it is that you need. Uh, Nisha's fantastic. I've not only gone, I'm sending my daughter there right now, so I cannot uh, more highly recommend her. Um, other than that, the book is out there, too. Uh, it is available at bookstores, Brilliant Burnout. Uh, that's available as well. So until next time, we will see you. My name is Rusty Humphreys, and she is Nisha Jackson, and this is The Nisha Jackson Show.